Yo, what's up? It's Xia, and before the video gets started, I just want to say I'm working on making better thumbnails, right? And this is basically the same as what if Obito had, uh, I mean, what if Deku had Obito's eyes, but I kind of fixed some things up, and I, I hope you guys like it. And also, I'd like to know what you, if what you guys think, you know, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like like usual and subscribe. But other than that, I also have one more thing to say. I used to record my what ifs whenever nobody was home, and that would basically mean that you guys would only get some whenever I had the chance to make them. But I just want to ask, like, do you guys want me to record them whenever people are home and like there could be a little bit of background noise? Or would you prefer like the quiet and like just none of that? Me personally, I mean, I would prefer to just make some for you guys because I like pumping out content for y'all because I, I can see the comments and I know that you guys appreciate it, you know? And I'm working on making better scripts better thumbnails and I'm also thinking of getting a mic so the audio quality will be a little better but other than that let's get into the recap okay guys so in the last part basically it covered how Deku got his eyes and how he trained them up as well as the sludge villain incident and I had left off with Deku meeting All Might and not getting one for all since he won't need it instead Mario's gonna get it but other than that guys let's get started okay so we had left off with Deku walking home and resting and for the 10 month training arc starts right and Deku basically had decided he was going to put himself through hellish training for the next 10 months. Deku would be at the beach training and how to use Kamui to suck things up better and get a better grasp at phasing through things. He'll also be working on his speed and strength. I know in the last part I said that he had like perfected it, but this is like, that was not perfected. That was more like he can use it good. But now after these 10 months, perfected. Like I don't want to hear it perfected. He'll also be working on his speed and strength. He'll be working on chakra control and he'll be way more on, on a way more advanced level than what he had before. He'll also be working out extremely hard and trying to master a couple new jutsus and something else I got in store for y'all. But the 10 months will go as follow. He'll have a very difficult workout schedule. A lot of times he'll end up passing out from the intensity, but it'll all be worth it since at the end of it, Deku will be about six feet tall and pure lean muscle. He'll be shredded and he'll be buff as shit and lean at the same time. He'll also be fast since he'll have trained like Rock Lee with the weights and things like that. He'll also have the immense strength of Sakura and Tsunade, you know, just because just I felt like giving it to him. Also, guys, before I go any further, I was just wondering, would you guys like it if I give this man Sage Mode? But not the Toad one or the Snake one. I want to give him just a random ass Sage Mode that, like, he's going to invent or something. And it's going to be like a red Sage Mode. It'll just be badass, trust me. So after the 10 months have passed, Deku will have mastered his Sharingan and something else you boys won't get to know until later. He'll also have mastery over water, fire, and lightning nature. And he'll be about as fast as White Mask Gobi. So I know you guys are like, what the fuck? Like, what do you mean? But don't question it. Plot. And about as strong as Sakura, you know, with the punches. Since he'll use his chakra to boost his physical stats. He's basically as strong as what I said before, White Mask Obito, without the wood style or regeneration factor. So basically, he could die from like normal stuff, but he can phase through it. So it's like basically immortal. <laughs> but yeah, guys, so the day of the entrance exam comes around and Deku walks in without tripping. So he won't be meeting Araraka and he also won't be muttering to himself. So Ido won't call him out. He'll get an almost perfect score on the written exam. And after that, the combat portion starts. And when Deku gets there, he notices that there's a girl who looks extremely worried. He'll go over there to try to talk to her, but Ido will get in the way and signal him to leave her alone. But Deku will face right through him and go to her. After he gets there, he taps her on the shoulder and asks her if she's nervous. She'll say, yeah, a, a little bit. Deku will then say, try to breathe in and out and clear your mind of thoughts of failure. Try to imagine yourself reaching the goal of passing this exam in your head and believe in your abilities and assess the situation. Breathe in and breathe out. She'll do this and then Deku will tell her good luck and that he hopes she'll pass. He'll then wink at her and walk to the front of the gate. And after that, as usual, President Mike will say, Go! There's no countdown in a real battle. After that, Deku will phase right through the doors and then speed blitz a bunch of the robots, breaking them to pieces. He'll calm only a couple robots away and use his lightning blade and Chidori to cut some of... Not, not Chidori, but like a Chidori to cut some robots in half. He'll also use his fire style to obliterate robots, and after that, he'll have defeated about a hundred robots. After that, Deku will just decide to relax. Like, he'll think, I don't really need any more since I can tell these other people won't be getting anywhere near that. 
He'd have at least 200 points from all that since they're one, two, and three pointers, so he knew he'd be fine. After that, a couple minutes go by, and Deku will then see all the kids running from the zero pointer. And he was just gonna stay put, but then he sees Roraka with the shoring gun, and after that, he'll jump off, off the building and phase through some of the buildings that get in the way, and he'll land right in front of Roraka. He'll then use his Kamui to teleport the zero pointer away and take the rubble off of her leg and ask Roraka if she's okay, and Roraka will. Oof, where was I? <laughs> and Uraraka would be like, yeah, I'm fine, and thank him for saving her. He'll then pick her up and say, don't worry, I, I got you. Like, I can tell your leg is hurt. I'll carry you there. He basically picks her up and carries her there, and she blushes, and yeah. So then, as he's walking her to recovery girl, she'll ask about his quirk, and he'll say, oh, it's one of my abilities. I can face through any objects and send things into a pocket dimension. Deku then starts explaining his quirk turn and asks, how many robots she took down she'd tell him her score from the original canon and he'd say wow really what's your quirk she'll tell him it's zero gravity and he'll be impressed by her and how it works and what it does and she'll basically tell him after that like he'll basically ask her why don't you make yourself float and fly and maneuver in the air it'd be a lot easier for you to be more mobile so then tell him her drawbacks and how hard it is for her to basically use her quirk on herself and he tells her that she should train to lessen the drawbacks and and after that she'll basically ask what his drawbacks are and he'll say well it used to be my stamina and my eyes but I train them to the point where I don't actually have any drawbacks anymore she'll be amazed that Deku would think wow like I can't believe it after that Deku would basically drop her off in uh, in uh, recovery girl and say like it was nice meeting her and tell her good luck and that he'll see her in class after that she'll smile and blush and say thank you after that Deku will basically go home and just chill like usual he'll basically train until he gets the letters and meditate he'll do mostly meditating training since his body is already decently up to up to up to par and he wants to strengthen his mind and his willpower he'll also work out on his body a lot more and the letter will finally arrive Deku will be told he passed as well as got some rescue points. And he's also told he handled the situation fraught. My bad. He'll say that he handled the situation flawlessly. He'll show his mom and she'll be pretty happy for him. And after that, the next day rolls around and Deku will walk to his class. And when he walks in, he'll see Bakugo and the kid who try to stop him. He'll then sigh and think, wow, I'm so lucky. You don't then see Deku and walk up to him and apologize to him and tell him he's a superior student and say that he noticed the other part. And Deku will say, I thought about that, but I wasn't sure. Then he said, I didn't save her for any points. I did it because it's what a hero would do. Uraraka will then walk in and hear that and say, well, thank you for the save, Izuku. He'll then turn around and see her and start talking to her for a bit. He'll then go sit down and Uraraka will sit down next to him. And after a bit, Aizawa will do as usual. It took you this much time to be quiet. And... It won't do. He'll tell them to get their uniforms and that they're going to be starting a test. And some of the people will start saying, oh, we're going to miss orientation. And Deku will just get up and go through a rock and eat a following behind. Aizawa will just look at them and say, follow their examples and ask less questions. We don't have time for stupid ceremonies. You're here to become heroes, aren't you? They'll then be changing and Kirishima will see Deku's body. And like usual, he'll be like, how'd you get so ripped? And Deku will basically explain that he just trained and that's honestly it. After that, they walk out of the training field and Aizawa will say that they're going to use their quirks like usual. And some of the people will then say, oh, that's fun. And Aizawa will do his usual canon with, all right, then fun. Whoever comes in last will get expelled. And after that, Aizawa will basically call up Deku and tell him to throw the ball. Deku then goes up to the circle and charges up his lightning nature in his arm as well as a lot of chakra to boost his strength. He'll then concentrate, breathe in and out and throw the ball with all of his strength, sending a huge shockwave of wind, kind of like All Might's punches. And when it goes into the air, it gets a score of 2,700 meters. Everyone will be impressed and Bakugo will be extremely angry. After that, they take all of their tests and everything goes like usual, where... Nothing really changes except for Bakugo getting better scores, making him be in second place since he's about his season 4 level of strength, and Deku will get first place. And this is basically what went down, just, just for the people who want to know. Deku basically jumps over the long jump easily. He'll get second in the side to side because of Mineta. 
He'll break the grip strength and get first place in the ball throw, get second place in the ball throw because of Uraraka, and he'll get the top scores and basically everything else like the push ups, sit ups, all that stuff. After that, class basically ends and nobody gets expelled this time since I just don't really see why I'd kick Mineta out, you know? But on Deku's way home, Uraraka catches up to him and asks if she can tag along. They take, a, they take the train, and when she's about to leave, Deku asks her for her number, and she gets very flustered and says, uh, okay, and he gives him her number, and after that, they took back and forth for a couple of days and start building a little bit of a bond. After that, a couple of days go by, and this is when Allmat walks into the class with his, I am here, walking through the door like a normal person, and then he basically starts telling them that they'll be doing heroes versus villains exercise, tells them to suit up, and okay, guys, so... Deku's costume will be the white mask Obito outfit with a more modern look to it. It won't look as ninja-y, it'll look more like sophisticated, like a little more dope. He'll also have the chains that the orange mask one had when he fought Minato, but they're gonna be hidden and he can like turn them on and off. So basically what I mean by hidden is that he'll usually have them in Kamui, in his Kamui dimension, but whenever he feels like he can teleport them back to him and they'll be like chains just around him. They'll be his his like capture like his capture tape basically and they're super discreet since you can't tell they're there until you know the last second after that yeah but that's basically it i mean he's gonna have his chains and the white um what's it called the white mask so yeah <laughs> After that, All Might announces the teams, and it's basically we're Rock and Deku versus Bakugo and Ida. So, in this version, like I said, oh shit, my script got messed up. <laughs> oh shit. So, in this version, Bakugo will be at his season 4 strength with all the moves he developed, and that'll be the only main difference between anything. Other than that, things will basically stay the same. After that, the match starts, and like usual, Bakugo will try to just fight Deku and rush at him. And Deku will tell Uraraka he knows Bakugo will, what Bakugo will do, and tells her she should stick by him. And when the time is right, she should get the bomb. Like usual, Bakugo comes running, rushing in with a lot of pent up anger from all the years of being in second place. And he runs in, trying to use his howitzer impact. And let's just say that it does not go well. <laughs> Deku jumps back and creates a clone that grabs Uraraka and takes her away. He then uses his water dragon jutsu to put out the flames and damage Bakugo. It stops Bakugo and after that Bakugo says try stopping this. He then removes the pin to his gauntlet. As th this happens Deku sucks the explosion into Kamui and phases right through Bakugo activating his restrainment chains. He then ties him up and after that Bakugo basically is taken out of the match but he tries to attack him still and the, and basically Deku phases right through it again and he then teleports himself and Bakugo into his pocket dimension and says why are you such a dick to everyone what is it with you and this lust to be the best as he kicks Bakugo in, in the gut and sends him flying Deku then jumps into the air and grabs Bakugo by the throat and says you know I could kill you at any moment and nobody would miss you you want to know why because you're just mean to people. I mean, think about it, dude. Like, you have nothing. The only thing that drives you is your urge to beat me. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Okay. And, oh, my God, the script. <laughs> ah, God. So, and Bakugo says, it's that's not the reason I want to beat you. Deku says, oh yeah, so what is it? Is it so you can bully people without a problem? After hearing this, Bakugo then says, no, you don't get it. I was supposed to be the best. Then you came in and ruined everything. He starts crying and Deku then says, you abuse your power. You don't even deserve it, you villain. After hearing this, Bakugo gets mad and says, tries to attack Deku and just, Deku just dodges and phases right through it like usual and says, I don't even have to try to stop you did you ever consider maybe training with me or stop being a dick maybe then people will like you Bakugo then gets sad and mad and thinks damn that's true Deku then <laughs> he uses his most powerful jutsu y'all ready for this he activates talk no jutsu <laughs> and basically talk no jutsu is Bakugo making him less of a dick and think of Deku as a rival kind of like season 4 but not being mean and 
he has more respect for Deku since he knows he's stronger. As this was happening in the outside world, Deku's clone had distracted Iida and beaten him while Uraraka got the bomb and won. After that, everyone just kind of waited for Deku and Bakugo to come back, with some people being worried and All Might wondering what the heck happened. And after a couple minutes, they come back fine, and Bakugo seems to be less angry than usual. After that, All Might talks to them and asks, what happened? And Deku says, oh, I just talked to him for a little bit. We fixed a couple things, and after that, they go their separate ways. And Deku walks to Uraraka home like he had been for the previous couple days. Foreshadowing, foreshadowing. <laughs> And yeah, that's where I'm going to leave it off for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, leave a like, you know, comment, subscribe for part three. But other than that, just want to get one last thing out of the way. If you guys like this, like, new thumbnail, then just let me know. It's just going to be the background to the video, you know. I just figured I would give you guys something better. Also, before this video ends, for the people who like watching um, What If Deku Has Godspeed, I'm going to be uploading one more part to this. And then I'll be uploading part five to the Godspeed one. And before I upload that, I just want to give you guys a head up, heads up. That part will also have a different thumbnail since I know a lot of you guys might like the, the first one. But I don't know. I just got a little tired of seeing that thing, the only thing on my channel. So I decided to change it, you know, give it a try. But yeah, other than that, if you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe. And uh, yeah, there will be a part three very soon. But other than that, <laughs> Zether.